This is Rob Tubber for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn. For the first time ever, I've managed to find my way into your office, Eddie. So thanks very much for having me. That's all right. This was my dad's office. It was actually my lounge growing up. But this was my dad's office that has had a big refurb because if you would have seen it when it was my dad's office, the walls were turquoise, so was the carpet. There was holes where his feet used to go on his desk. It was a right carsey. So we've glammed it up a little bit. And welcome. Welcome, old boy. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a very glamorous office. Um, I don't even have an office, so well done. Um, right, let's get on with it because Tony Bellew's outside and he's, he's, yes. he's gagging to get on with uh, Hearn Bellew tonight. Uh, first and foremost, the obvious place to start Conor Ben out of his fight with Adrian Granados. Yeah, gut. I mean, it um, never gets any easier. I, keep, I always lie and I say, you know, the more disappointment you have, the more you take it on the chin. And I came in here this morning. Uh, I had a phone call from Conor Ben who said, I failed my COVID test, I'm, I, I want to fight. And I said, mate, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Um, I put my head on my hands and then went outside and bumped into my old man out there. And I went, and he went, what's happened? I said, come in. I said, Connor Ben's failed a COVID test. And he went, good job you stacked the card. And I went, yeah, but you know, dad, like oh, just every fucking time, it's another kick in the nuts and when's this going to end and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said to me, sort yourself out, honestly. And I was like, what? He went, shut up, moaning. Go and get on with it. I was like, yeah. And genuinely, thankfully, this is the most stacked card of the whole fight camp. So it's a blow. Conor Ben's a, a big star and it was a good fight. But we moved forward with a world title fight as main event. Obviously, Chris Billum and Tommy McCarthy, co-main event. We actually, the, the, one, the one good thing to come out of this is that Yildirim against Cullen was actually an in, a streamed fight before the main broadcast. That will now kick off our broadcast. And um, you know Jack Cullen's a two-to-one favourite in that fight? That's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. But anyway, um, so yeah, we've got a fantastic card. Gutted for Connor, gutted for Granados. Connor wants to fight Saturday. Connor wants to fight next Saturday or the 14th. The reality is, if he stays asymptomatic and tests negative in the next few days, August 14th with the Boazzi card is, does have potential. Realistically, I think Leeds is the place that will drop, which would make Leeds, you know, Warrington Lara, Katie Taylor against Han, Maxi Hughes against Strafon, Ben Granados. I mean, it would make it an absolutely epic card. So disappointed, but we move forward with a cracking night on Saturday. What's the situation with Granados? What does he do from here? So I said to him, you've got a couple of options. Firstly, I said, do you want to fight on Saturday? Like, I, if you want to box an eight-rounder, and he went, no, no. He said, I want Ben. I think he, he's growing in confidence about this fight more and more every day. So I said, the earliest you're going to fight is the 14th. Realistically, I think it's September the 4th. And he said, OK. And I said, do you want to stay? And he went, no, I want to go home. He said, I'm in the fight. I said, you have my word. You had this fight. Um, so he's going to go home tomorrow and wait for the news. Everything's kind of dependent on the next few days. If Connor starts to get symptoms and feels a bit rough, August 14th is just much too close. So, um, yeah, we will reschedule that fight and you will see it soon. What's the saying here? Is that one person's misfortune is another person's opportunity? Lee Wood now yeah. tops the bill, yeah. challenging for the WBA regular belt against Zukan, Can Zhu, um, in a fight that really can only be a great fight. Yeah, and there was a few people who moaned at me saying that should have been top of the bill anyway. Connor Ben's a big draw, so you know we know that he's he's top of that bill. But it is a world title fight, and I know you can talk about the WBA, but genuinely Zukan is top three or four featherweight in the world and it is an absolute unbelievable opportunity for Lee Wood. I mean Zoo Can has been out of the ring for nearly two years. It's taking part place in the UK. It's a complete shot to nothing for Lee Wood. You've got two great trainers in Ben Davison and Pedro Diaz. You've got the opportunity for Lee Wood to only become the second man from Nottingham to become world champion. I can't remember the other one, Carl something. And um, it's a great story. But my God, is it a tough fight. I mean, if you haven't watched Zoukan before, enjoy yourself because he is an absolute ferocious fighter that has just, well, he's got, he has the best volume, he's the best volume puncher in boxing, you know, in terms of activity in the ring. 
and Lee Wood's got it all to do. Um, but strange things happen in that garden. We saw that last time. And during this fight camp, you will see a lot of ups and downs. Um, and I think that's a fight that you could see something interesting happen, as is with Yildirim against Cullen, which is, funny enough, like that's probably the fight I'm looking forward to the most. About so I just think it's such a weird fight, isn't it? You know what I mean? When we did the um, Yildirim deal, we had to give him two fights after against Canelo. Disappointed in his performance against Canelo. I know Canelo is pound for pound number one, but his, his promoter, Amit Ono, who does scare me quite a lot, but he's a good friend of mine, um, I said to him, I just feel that let's make an intriguing fight. And he was like, well, who do you think? I said, Jack Cullen. And he went, who's Jack Cullen? Had a look and went, yeah, it's a good fight. We'll take it. But I think when Amit Ono saw the odds uh, today, he was like, what's going on here? And he shouldn't be a favourite in this fight. I'm sorry. You know, Abney Yildirim, regardless of what you think about his performance against Canelo, he can fight. You know, look at his fights with Durrell and people like that. He, he can fight. But again, for Jack Cullen, just the most... Like, if Jack Cullen beats Abney Yildirim, he moves into the top 15 of basically every governing body. Um, what a chance for him. And, and, you know, same applies to Lee Wood. Just staying with Lee Wood and Zhu Khan, of course, week two of fight camp sees Kid Galahad mm. versus Jazza Dickens for the vacant IBF. You've got Josh Warrington and Marissa Lara on mm. September the 4th, of course, not for a title. Um, the winner of Zhu Khan versus Lee Wood, I'm assuming a possible, a possible opponent for the winner of either of those two fights. Yeah, I mean, we were very close to the Zhu Khan Warrington fight. In fact, that fight was done until COVID kicked in. And even when COVID was there, it was nearly done. Um, I think that Leo Santa Cruz won't actually box at 126 pounds again. And if he doesn't, they just need to elevate Zucan. He deserves it. Like, it's not like he's a paper champion, is it? He's a proper, you know, he's an he's a out-and-out world-class fighter. So I think if that happens, that you could see the winner of Saturday fight the winner of next week in a, in a big unification matchup. That's why I said in the press conference about Lee Wood, like, you could fight Santa Cruz, Navarrete, the winner of Galahad Dickens, winner of Warrington Lara. He's talking about, you know, this is really, he sits on the verge of, you know, sort of several hundred thousand pound paychecks if he can win this. And Lee Wood has always had to do it the hard way. He's probably taken late notice fights, he's taken shit money, he's gone out sparring, he's, he's done everything. He's paid his dues. And I'm really pleased to see him get the opportunity and it's life-changing for him. Certainly can Zhu, Zhu can, and Golden Boy will be looking and saying, OK, there's a real nice mix there in the UK. And I think the UK fight fans are going to really enjoy watching him fight. I always felt, by the way, sorry, that Warrington Kanzu, style-wise, was outrageous. And, you know, he's got a tough job first against Lara. He certainly has. Um, but I think anyway that those kind of six featherweights end up, or five featherweights, whoever comes out on top on Saturday, I think it'll be a good fight. Um, Chris Billum Smith versus Tommy yeah. McCarthy. I think uh, more often than not, I'm asking people on social media what's their favourite fight. I think that's pretty high on everybody's yeah. list. As close to a 50 50 fight as you're really going to get. Yeah, I saw that. I looked at the. Uh, someone sent me the odds last night of Alder Card, and um, they're very close odds for those three fights. Three really good fights Yildirim, Cullen. Billum Smith, Tommy McCarthy, and Kanzu against Lee Wood. I, I see Chris Billum Smith as, as the favourite with the bookies. Is he the favourite? I mean, I don't know. Tommy McCarthy seems really confident. And actually, I really applaud both fighters and both camps because Tommy was kind of like on the verge of a final eliminator. He's really, although Chris Billum has the Commonwealth and the two combined made the British, he's really giving Chris Billum Smith an opportunity to just project his own career to unbelievable levels. Um, Shane and Chris Billum Smith are absolutely convinced they win by knockout. Tommy McCarthy and Mark Dunlop are absolutely convinced they win this fight. You've got a great dynamic there of, you know, Shane, I think, used to spar with Tommy or had an amateur fight. Tommy's good mates with Carl Frampton. You know, a, I think he's coming on Saturday. Um, it's just a really good fight. And to be honest... I think it's the kind of fight that's been lacking a lot from British boxing over the last five or ten years. And I'm probably to blame for some of that because a lot of the time you give these guys WBC International, IBF International fights because it's hard to make the domestic fights if you don't have the fighters. Do you know what I mean? And even then, 
it's hard to make the domestic fights because I don't really want to fight him, give him an opportunity, don't want to lose to him. Do you know what I mean? But we should put more pressure on these kind of fights because when you get them together, you realise how good they are. So you've got you know, a guy from Belfast fighting a guy from the UK in Bournemouth fighting for the British Commonwealth and European Championship. Back in the old days, that would have been a really big fight. And it, it should be, and it is. But we need to champion these kind of fights because I want to see more of them. Moving on, um, we've kind of touched briefly upon week two of Fight Camp. Where are we with week three of Fight Camp? There's a lot of TBAs, a lot of fighters on that card without opponents. I mean, I know you have enough at this point to know that. I'm sure you're working hard in, in the backgrounds with regards to that, but I'm sure you're not thrilled by having most of the card not yeah, matched it, at this point. It shouldn't be because most of the card is matched. So Savannah Marshall is matched. Um, Michael Mickinson, we know, has already announced a match against Ranowski. Um, Cash Farouk is also matched. Uh, so... Basically, most of that card is matched. But, yes, we do need to make some announcements. It's probably... He's definitely not lazy on our behalf, but it's probably the guys have been focused more on, you know, dealing with fight week build-up and stuff like that. But thank you for the uh, making me aware of it, and I'll make sure those are updated on the website shortly. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, I love Wetsy Bolotniks. I mean, I think... It's a fantastic fight. It is. It's, and, you know, um, Lee Eaton from MTK keeps messaging me going... He's going to do it. You know, he's going to win. They really believe they'll beat Boatsy. But this is the acid test for Boatsy, isn't it? This is, you know, Bolotniks is as tough as they come. And I, I always talk about finding that level between where Boatsy's been boxing and Dimitri Bivol. And, and Bolotniks is, he's actually closer to the Bivol level than, than where Boatsy's been boxing. So we're going to find out everything we need to know about Joshua Boatsy on week three. For argument's sake, Conor Ben is fit and firing, ready to go. Who headlines that, Bill? I did think that earlier. Uh, probably Boatsy because that's, he's the headline. And I don't think you should take that away from him by adding Conor Ben. But I don't think Conor would care. He just wants to fight, you know, but we'll see. With that fight, or uh, say, being, say not being matched, you've mentioned there that those fights are matched, but it's taken a little bit longer than per perhaps that you would have liked. Mm -hmm. Is that because people are looking at the zone and thinking they've got uh, people asking for silly money? What, what's been the hold-up with that? No, not really. I mean, a mixture of lots of things. Some people... Are difficult to match, um, you know. Savannah Marshall, quite difficult to match. She's quite awkward, and no one really wants to fight her. And it's very thin in the middleweight division to find. And uh, we've got a good undefeated opponent for her. Um, who else? Cash Farouk. He's fighting a Mexican. It's a really good fight. We, I will get that announced. Don't worry. Um, Ranowski McKinson is a really good fight. Um, I think who else is on that card? Scott Fitz is on that card. He's also matched now. Um, Hopey Price is matched as well. Yeah, so most of it is just probably a lack of us or me getting it in order to get it out. But no, not that people are asking for more money because we've got a bigger budget, although that does happen and is happening. But no, um, just sometimes it's quite tough making the right kind of fights. I think one of my biggest weaknesses is that sometimes I don't pull the trigger quick enough on fights like that for undercard because I'm always looking for the perfect fight. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes you search for it, search for it, and you get to a point where you've actually lost one that was actually good enough, but you were waiting for the right one. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Just waffling. I'm used to you right now. It's okay. It's been a while since I've listened to you waffle, so I'm actually I'm actually quite happy to listen to you. Yeah, you mentioned Scott Fitzgerald there. Uh, wouldn't be right to mention Scott Fitzgerald about Anthony Fowler, who of course has Rico Mueller as a late replacement. A lot of rumours doing the rounds about a potential Liam Smith fight at some point this year, all Liverpool derby, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, what can you tell me about that? I can tell you that I love the fight to bits. I mean, it's two scousers who can really fight, who are the same weight division, who. I don't think, well, I know they're not friends, you know. Is there any, any animosity? Find out. I think with Anthony Fowler, he's searching for that big fight. Liam Smith was not a fight, you know, it, it was Ted Cheeseman or Scott Fitzgerald. But you get to a point where it's like, OK, they're not available to fight right now. Liam Smith's coming off a defeat, which really won, in my opinion. But sometimes a perfect fight comes together that sells out the arena, gets everybody excited. And when we talk about like old throwback fights, old school fights, there's a kind of fight, you know, whether it's Jamie Moore against Matthew Macklin, like that, that's the kind of fight that that is. 
So I've spoken to both teams about that fight. There's considerable interest from both teams. We'll see what happens on Saturday night. I'm a bit concerned about Rico Muller because Robert Garcia was a tough fight because he's so durable, but he's not dangerous in my opinion, really. Rico Muller will just try and knock Anthony Fowler out. I think he'll get stopped, but he's more dangerous than Robert Garcia, perhaps not as durable. So we'll see what happens and then we'll move forward, hopefully, with that fight, which would be a barnstormer for Liverpool. Going to quickly skate through the rest of the card, um, starting with the debutante, Sandy yes. Ryan. Yeah. Um, a great time for women's boxing, mm -hmm. and she seems to be somebody who's going to add an awful lot of excitement to the, to the female mix. Yeah, we've kind of gone from like female boxing becoming like, uh, you know, it, it was almost uh, an exception to see a, a female on the card or coming through to loads of them. You know, and that's great for women's boxing. It will, it won't dilute the value of women's boxing, but they'll need to be good enough and they'll need to, just because it's a female fight, it doesn't mean it's always going to work. So they've got to be good enough, they've got to be promoted in the right way and they've got to be moved in the correct way. I really think Sandy Ryan is going to be a huge star, right? She's edgy, she's aggressive, she's a great fighter, she's confident. I think she's going to be exciting and she wants to move quick. Fair play to this fight she's taking. You know, this other girl's, I think, four and one, never been stopped. Sandy wants a six rounder, not a four rounder. She wants to go for it. She wants to move quick. Got a good team behind her in STN. I really feel like she's going to be a star. And I think Derby particularly, I think, I think it's a nice little area for us to work on. I think she's engaging. She's good fun. She's exciting. And it's going to be an interesting performance for her on Saturday night. Right, and before I let you go, I've got to ask about Canelo Alvarez. Mm. What's the situation with Canelo currently? So, um, we made PBC an offer to do the fight on The Zone. PBC made Canelo an offer to do the fight on Fox. We discussed it. Um, Canelo decided to move forward with that offer from the PBC. And the contracts couldn't be agreed on, quite frankly. I've seen the comments from Caleb Plant. I'm sure Canelo's got his own opinions of those as well. But the reality is... It couldn't get over the line for September the 18th. So now we're faced with a decision. Do we box on September the 18th against someone else? Do we wait and see what happens? Or do we continue those conversations with Caleb Plant? Everything in play right now. But we just know that September the 18th isn't an option. Obviously, Canelo's a free agent. Um, but you're, you know, he's kind of, you've both said that you're kind of involved with the team. When you say the negotiations, are you leading those negotiations with PBC? Are you speaking direct to PBC about that fight? No. Because what happened was um, Canelo Alvarez made it very clear to us that I'm on the team, you know, I'm, I'm his promoter. But if I start getting involved and, you know, upsetting people, there's very little chance of that fight happening. So what we said was he shared the offer with us. We all discussed it and a decision was made to move forward with that. And I said to, you know, to his legal team, you, you carry on that contract. I'm not lead promoter of that show. I'm on Canelo's team. You know, I'll be behind him, I'll be supporting him, I'll make sure everything's, you know, fair on fight week and, and make sure that we take care of our media obligations and press conferences and, and so forth. But I'm not here to derail a legacy fight or, a, you know, the dream of him becoming undisputed. So now, now that's not an option. We go back to look at the options on DAZN as well for the next fight. But it does remain that he wants that undisputed fight. And if you said to him, what fight do you want most next? He would say, I want the Caleb Plant fight. What do you make of, of what Caleb Plant came out and said to your old mate, Mike Coppinger, actually, um, came out and said about the, the clauses that were in the contract? What can you clarify with um, regards to any of those? I mean, I think some, some, some clauses are quite standard with a fight of, of that magnitude. You know, like if we see it with AJ, it's just when, when you're... Caleb Plant's a great fighter. When you talk about A-sides and B-sides, like... This isn't one that was particularly close. So obviously, in life, in business, things favour the A-side in, in a deal. So it's not for me to comment on, you know, I'm sure Canelo's got his opinions on Caleb Plant's comments. Ultimately, it couldn't get made for that date. So we either revisit that and try to make it work, or we move on for the time being. So uh, it's no problem, it's no drama. I don't think anyone's pissed off or running around screaming at people. It's just, unfortunately... Not now, maybe later. But now we just have to decide. It's September, it's seven weeks on Saturday. 
but also at the same time, our next three shows in the US, which are pretty much ready to go, are all based around when that fight might happen or if that happens on the zone, etc. So we everybody needs some clarity soon. And we talked yesterday, I'm sure we'll talk again today and see what we're going to do. Final one on that. Obviously, rematch clauses are kind of par for the course now in fights of that magnitude, as you just said. The clause about him guaranteed $40 million regardless of the opponent if Caleb Plant was to pull out. Is that standard? Have you ever seen that? Has that ever been used no. against you in, in, in one of your negotiations? Is it something Anthony Joshua has ever had in one of his contracts? At the end of the day, there's no point speculating on what Caleb Plant said because some of it might be correct. As his promoter or as, as the person you know, trusted with, with, with going through these deals, are you not I'm privy not, to I'm those information? No, the, the lawyers deal with that contract. We know the, the term that was offered, terms that were offered, and they were accepted. So from then on, it's handled by the lawyers. And I, you know, I know what goes into a contract. I'm not going to speculate on that. Again, I go back to the point where, you know, this is a situation where you have the biggest star in world boxing and and being the star that he is, to make that move, to make that commitment, comes with certain stipulations. It's not greedy. He's, he's earned that right. You know, Canelo Alvarez is the biggest star in the US boxing, one of the biggest stars in worldwide boxing. He's earned that right to negotiate from a certain position. And Caleb Plant, quite frankly, is very lucky to be in that fight for that kind of money. Doesn't mean he should be taken advantage of. He's got to fight his corner as well. But the star in that fight is Canelo Alvarez. That's the only reason that fight is what it is. And when you work so hard to achieve that position, you have to get what you deserve. Simple. The number's kind of banded about for that $40 million for Canelo plus pay-per-view upside. Can, uh, Caleb Plant, $10 million. With regards to Canelo, are you comfortable, confident that you can, you can match that $40 million for, a, for example, a Dimitri Bivol or an Artur Baturbiev? It's, it's a conversation for design. I mean, Canelo Alvarez has been and will always be paid very, very well, and he deserves to be. He's a huge star that delivers huge numbers. Um, so, you know, you're in a very competitive market at the moment. And he stands as the front runner, the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Is, Dimitri, is it fair to say Dimitri Bivol is the front runner outside of uh, Caleb Plant? I think if, if he was to fight on the zone next and if he was to fight on September the 18th, I think Dimitri Bivol is, is one of the front runners for sure. I think it's a very good fight. And Canelo does have a tendency to like to face the world champions. And, you know, he's not going down. He's, he'll only go up in weight class. But again, I still go back to the fact that if you asked him what fight he'd like next, it would be Caleb Plant. Final, final, final one. Um, obviously, last September, he didn't box on Mexican Independence Weekend, the two big dates in the calendar. We all know Cinco de Mayo, Mexican Independence Weekend. Is there conversations? Would he be open to potentially moving the date and not boxing on that date again? I think because of his activity, there's less stress, if you like, about saying, you know, don't forget, he boxed in December, he boxed in February, he boxed in May. And it was our plan for him to box in September and December. So if he only boxes once in the remainder of the year, it's not the end of the world. I'm sure he'd love to box on Mexican Independence Day, but at the same time, because of his activity, he's not sweating that fact. Okay, Eddie, thanks very much for your time. I'm going to let you go before Tony Belli comes bursting through the doors, but uh, look forward to this week at Fight Camp. Let's go. Thank you, and thanks for your support. If you haven't downloaded the zone yet at 1.99 a month, 63.3 pence per show at a fight camp, make sure you do. Support it. You're going to love it. You're going to love the production. We look forward to your feedback, good and bad, and uh, hope you enjoy. Cheers, Ed. Cheers.